Simple little sliding rig, so no weight at all, just a trace, two hooks sliding, barbless of course, and uh, hooking the basal very simply, just through the head and back through towards the tail, and that does the job, out we go. There we go then. Oh, 39 pound of fish. The biggest pike I've ever caught and probably ever likely to catch. Let's get him back in again. I need to cut out this form. I'm going to use this big saw for that. through the best I can to get the hose out. <laughs> no, the drawers have been made quite a bit thinner yet. But there's our basic shape. shapes will fit together now. Here's a big, big fish. The next stage I've got to use a hot knife to slice around the stuff and uh, get the shapes that I really want. A knife can spread them quickly but you've just got time to get a nice catch like cut like that. All I've got to do is keep slicing away at this gradually, getting the um, making sure I do the same each side every time.
Well, that's most of the cutting done with the hot knife, as you can see. Uh, we've got the basic shape here, top and underneath the gills and the face. Now I've got to work into the end, into the mouth, and start cutting in to get all the gills and the tongue and everything. I think it's going all right. I can only judge the proportions as well as I can from the photograph. Well, there's the basic carving done. Now we've got the surforms. Smooth it all out. I'm not even sure I might be able to use the surform to get a little bit of the texture in for. I've got to consider this. I'm wondering about the texture in for the, for the skin. It might be quite nice that, that marking for the scales actually, but we'll see about that later. So once I've got it all that done, then hopefully I can just use a sander. We've got two sorts of sanders here to do the details. We've got the flat bed there, the orbital sander, and then we've got the belt one so I can get in and around the shapes. That should be ideal. Let's just check that sander and see how well that grip will take this down out of interest. Use of these two tools alone, we should be able to get most of this down. So you've seen, you've seen how. Now I'm just going to back to going, now I'm just going to go back to getting on with it, and we'll pick up later. Well, I'm using quite a heavy rasp now, as well as the circle. As you can see, it's uh, soon bringing things into shape. Look, lovely the way that's going. Well, here we are. Then here's our basic fish form. size and now I've got to get sanding it with the sander to get it smooth and then we'll look at texture after that. Right, let's start smoothing it out before we think about adding actually more texture back on again. Right, well there are just a few little hollows here and there and dents that I want to fill and I'm going to take some of this dust that I've just been sanding off and add a little PVA glue to that and we should be able to just fill up these little lumps with that all right. Right so there's the glue and the powder we just mix that up to get a nice putty. But I don't want it too wet that it's uh, going to be liquid but I want it just sticky enough that's going to push in and then if I find little areas that what I'm doing is a very tiny one here for instance I can just take a bit of this and push it into there right in and then we'll sand it off later and hopefully that will fill it. There we go, that's that one. There's all little holes, pop marks here and there. Just seem to happen with the rasp or I don't mind the odd bit of texturing because it gives the fish a bit of age, but I don't want too much of that. I might like use this little belt sander just to tidy up things. Our dentist doesn't use one of those. So there we are, we've got the basics um, sorted now. I just want to let that dry off and come back and sand it by hand and uh, tidy those pieces up. Then we're going to be going on to 
towards trying to find texture for the pike, and the skin, and the scales, and then we're going to put the fins in, and then it'll suck like a fish. <clears throat> I might want to just go into here with a hot knife and just find those gill rakers. Well, we've taxed it early, and necessity is another of invention, and we have to make all our own things up. So I've taken some car body filler and a bit of hardener and added that together. I'm going to see if I can make some teeth for the pike, and my intention is to make them double pointed so that I can just push them into the foam when they dry and then they'll spray up. We shall see. It's, uh, I said it would be a bit more pasty than this, it's very, very uh, liquid. So just because it, it'll go very, very fast when it does start to set. And I might not have time to actually pick the stuff up and, and use it. And I can't see any other way with it being so wet at the moment. So I can't use a mould or anything for it. It's starting to go off already, so let's see what we can do. It won't have very long. I don't think it's going to work. It's, no, it's, it's gone hard. I'll have to do a lot less hardener in. Unless I can actually cut it out of this. I don't know. Unless I can actually cut it off this. There must be all sorts of ways of doing this. Let's see if I can do it this way. Maybe if I do it this way, I can sharpen the ends up afterwards. Or a small grinding wheel or something. Everything's worth trying. Looks like it's going to be too brittle for that, but I just don't know yet. Okay, so what have we got? Uh, we've got these pieces now that have hardened, and they've hardened quite well. And of course I'm getting the most obvious thing of all, simple toothpicks which we can use for the smaller teeth. So all I really need are the much larger teeth, and hopefully this stuff is dried hard enough that I might be able to just sand it down without it breaking. It seems pretty strong stuff. Of course, I'll give it some perspex. That is broken off then, but let's see if we can give it a go. Let's see if we can just get a tooth or two out of this. Those teeth are very pointy. That will work this way. It's a bit of time, but we only need ooh, eight or so of the great big ones. So hopefully, I can make something that will work for that. And if I just make a little hole. Give it a little bit of a nail. I can super glue these in. Oh, there we are, that's not bad. You see, we're getting a nice little tooth there. Yes. Right, so we're actually finding that we can do these teeth in a much easier way, carefully. But the resin is so strong that I can actually use the, uh, the grindstone. There we are. There we are, very delicate, but you can see we've got all the larger teeth that we need, and I hope the toothpicks will do the rest. If you can see this texturing on the fish now that I've been doing, it's quite effective. And it's done, or I'm doing it right now, by using the round surfhorn. So I'm bringing the surfhorn around the fish. much has lovely scaling of the fish on it as you can see from the texturing there look at that if we can get that to work with the paint that's going to really look fantastic what I want to do next is add a base coat of colour to this and uh, then we'll be able to work over it later and I can put the fins in then and the teeth I'd like to do a little bit of work on the gill rakers now with a hot knife what I want to do now is get these gill rakers into here and I don't manage it without the knife even being hot actually so I can get the texture of these when I use the different paints and reds and right back in there but also if it's 
too hot, it goes in too deep, if it's too cold it sticks. So we're just going to try and get it right. Very carefully in we go. Quick as possible, but right in there. That's got those girls done all the way round. Here, look. I've got to go back along here to, to get underneath them. The hardest part of this bit. Just do a line with the girl. I've got to go back down. And just get underneath that. Those girl rakers. And smooth it out with the hot blade. Just come out from underneath those. So, just finish these off. You can see now that the rakers are just sticking out like little fronds as we wanted them to. I think the sanding there never finished that. You can see all that heck of these. What I'm going to do is put a coat of mid green on or light green on. And um, then I'm going to put a dark coat on over over that and wipe it back so that hopefully the darks will go into these little ridges of the scales and start to give us the effect we need. Having said I'm going to paint it, I've just decided not for the moment. I want to put the teeth in first and then I make the things and then I make the painting. We'll see. Um, now the teeth. Drill bit I can use. As I said, I'm always trying to bring you out. And I've also got these two watch screwdrivers that could be very useful for just drilling into something like this. And the first thing I'm going to want are the largest of the teeth. I've got several photographs here from the pike and from the the fish as well, that other pipe that is. And the biggest teeth seem to be, sounds like an award, and the biggest award, the biggest teeth, seem to be just about here and there. Uh, let's look on my pipe here. It seems to be just at the, at the bend here. So if I can make a hole, Just, I'm going to just drill down a little way into there. Should be that right, and they face slightly inwards. You see, I've got the gills. Interesting. Um, I'm cutting around. Come, come around here. You see, you see there, cutting around them, then down underneath them so that they fan out. It's quite effective, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see if these these two pegs work. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which ones am I going to use first? They're not going to be, actually I might have to shorten them down a bit because these are a bit too massive. This is something you can see. Um, yeah. They need to be about like that. They are massive fangs but not quite as big as I thought. So I'll just take those off and Another one as well. These are the biggest ones, I guess. So. Hopefully, they'll be strong enough to withstand this sort of work. And we'll try and push those in to the hole of this made. And we've got to try a different glue a bit to see if I can get those to stay in. Now they actually point slightly inwards. On the real beast, so that's what we'll do. 